How do you recommend mm -hmm. um, approaching younger attorneys whom you supervise yeah. to um, open the door for them to be able to speak to you about how they're doing? Mm. This actually is something that uh, I do more often and helping young people, younger people is something I, I'm passionate about. I would say that the first step is trust because without trust, no one will want to, you know, open up to, to you, to others, and, and no one want to reveal their vulnerability. So if you, if it's something that you've noticed, um, uh, perhaps, you know, maybe develop a, a, a rapport with the person um, so that, um, so that there's more trust that with the person and 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 they would be more more willing to open up to you um the other thing is culture and if the culture is not conducive to support to openness to vulnerability uh it would be very tough and you would be uh, going against the grain as well um so those are some a couple of two kind of really general comments um do you can you like, is that sufficient or do you have something more like more specific that you are dealing with? I think that's helpful. I'm just, you know, as a, as a mentor to, especially mm. to younger attorneys, male or mm. female, um, mm -hmm. in an environment that is a pretty safe environment, but where people, you know, do their best to be bulletproof. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, to, I, I think what you mentioned though, that the issue is developing, you know, making sure that personal relationship is solid and there's a track record of trust, um, right mm -hmm. before and another thing, mm -hmm. yeah. go ahead. Yeah. And another thing is, since you mentioned you are a mentor, um, a, a great way to encourage that trust and vulnerability is you demonstrate it yourself. You know, you share something <laughs> yourself first. Um, that's mm -hmm. why you know I I open up myself and about part of my history and mm -hmm. and um, uh, and that really goes a long way Thank because you. you can't say yeah. one thing and and expect them to do an, another thing if you if you don't yeah. act that same way that way. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. Uh, I followed your advice on regular physical exams by my internal medicine doctor, and he made the point that your your physical condition can be affected by your mental health condition. So if you 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 get anxiety or depression, you want to control that, prevent uh, problems that would arise physically. Yes, yeah, that's that's definitely true, and 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 converse is 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 it's true as well. Your your mental state affects your physical, and vice versa. So, thank you for that uh, for that input, and I hope uh, you are following um, the doctor's advice <laughs> in both areas. Yes, thank you so much, Miss Song. That was a very um, enjoyable presentation. And, and I learned a great deal. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, one of the most interesting parts was that the tech companies know this, um, let's just say, way to program people to get them to spend more time online. And I was just curious, um, it, is that something that they knew, for example, before Facebook got started, they, they knew we're going to go try to do this or they learned it after, for example, Facebook got started. Um, I, you know, I, I, I can't say kind of uh, um, uh, generalize it. You know, I can't say all of the tech companies or this or one way or another. I may have to maybe watch that documentary for people who have um, actual experiences in various companies to see what they knew, what they didn't know. But I think... Um, to give them the benefit of the doubt in the beginning, maybe they just, they, they're not. Oh, that's my clock. Um, they, they knew that there's this uh, 
uh, effect, and they try to do that, you know, maybe within a benign, benign um, scope. And to be honest, I was on the course that we teach, um, you know, consumer experience and product design and bring neuroscience in, uh, insights. And but then, um, but then it, it could get out of control. Either, you know, either they consciously know about it, like the cigarette companies, and and, and know about it, and then then continued, or they they lose control when people when companies get bigger, they are under the pressure of growth and you know more and more, and and um, they just had to go with the flow. And there may be dissenting voice in the companies. There may be you know they, there may be a, a disagreement in the company as well. So it's hard to say, but at least to a certain extent, uh, they they knew about it. Or some knew about it. Just personally, I I thought that we have um, grown too much mentally to ever be subject to all of those lies and um, all of the other stuff, uh, propaganda that people put out. Until of course we saw the January six um, insurrection happening, all based on a lie, all based mm -hmm. on um, social media. It, it's just really mm -hmm. intriguing. We, we haven't changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the whole uh, the psyche gets so splintered. We are all living in very different realities. Uh, <laughs> and we can probably have a whole hour. Um, and I don't know if people have the solutions yet, but um, with with um, social media, it has to, you know, we are confronted with uh, coming to a really uncomfortable, dangerous zone in our consciousness that we are many, you know, we're grappling with. And technology has this uh, magnifying effect and this exponential effect. When it's bad and poisonous and toxic, it really gets blown to uh, detrimental proportions. Yes. I also had a question, but first of all, thank you for a great presentation. Um, in the section on chemical dependency, one of the substances you listed was hallucinogens. I recently read a book by Michael Pollan, How to Change Your Mind, about mm -hmm. hallucinogens specifically. And he found, <clears throat> his review of the literature showed that it is actually hallucinogens like LSD, uh, psilocybin are not uh, addictive substances and actually have the tendency to reduce uh the desire to use the substances the more you do it so it has a yeah yeah so i was just curious what research you had and if you could share any papers showing that they're addictive substances it's just something i'm personally curious about sure yeah there's um there's definitely i'm aware of um michael pollan's book and um i know there's a um uh, psychedelic you know uh renaissance uh you yeah. know a lot of the what you mentioned and, and in fact i'm curious about uh, about that myself to to learn more and i know a lot of that uh, have a long history in um many of the uh, um indigenous uh, cultures have used them and um and they can have very positive effect on even treating depression. Um, and, and that's in, a, you know, kind of in experimental stage in the medical community. And um, psilocybin is, is being administered um, uh, as well. Um, I do know that when you use that um, as a therapy, it needs to be administered um, very carefully. It, it needs to be by someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and it's not something that you would do your your, your yourself. Um, so um, they are they are both valid. I will try to look for uh, literature that perhaps can shed more light onto um, both their positive and, if not done right, their negative effects. But that's a great question. Uh, David, do you have you know do you have anything to say on that on Sean's? um question i i i can comment a couple things uh the substances from from what i know and what i've read uh don't don't tend to be physically addictive uh they can be psychologically addictive just like 
tango dancing would be psychologically addictive. When you uh, perform an activity that you really enjoy, uh, if you have a positive experience, you may wish to repeat it. Um, but uh, also, as Bebe uh, stated, uh, it, it's used uh, therapeutically actually to break depression and to, to break uh, other types of dependencies. But I agree with her statement that uh, it needs to be uh, administered in a controlled environment uh, by a professional. Thank you, David. David, you just made me think of iboga as well. I know iboga is actually used to break addiction to heroin, which is another uh, psychedelic. So mm. it, it, very interesting. I guess one comment would be it, if it is a psychological rather than a chemical uh, substance, I believe it's currently on the chemical side of the ledger. Um, so maybe potential feedback for future sessions is maybe move it over to the right hand of that mm. slide as opposed to the left hand of that slide mm. interesting well um so i'm going by like i said the uh, the, the the manual from apa yep. and um they have not uh included for example they have not included the the internet addiction addiction yet and so you know it takes time and and um things are evolving so that that's they are an authority in that, but you know they they are um, they evolve as well. So a point very well taken, and uh, it's a very intriguing area to continue to follow and study. Thank you, Sean. Great, thank you, and thank you again for a great presentation. Oh, uh, you're very welcome. Mm -hmm.